Mishma Lane and I'm here today with a little sketch to scrapbook page twist. So I have a sketch that is um, being used by the Jenny Bolin inspiration blog and the Jenny Bolin uh, Studio Mercantile, the, the JBS Mercantile Forum, and they're doing a um, sport-themed or inspired few weeks of challenges, including this sketch challenge, which is actually not a scrapbooking sketch at all, but the dimensions of a pro tennis court. So we're all taking this as inspiration and then creating a page with it. I'm going to be using two uh, in Instagram photos, and I've printed them at just shy of four inches square. And then I have some bits and pieces from the August um, JBS Mercantile kit. So I have um, some basic gray paper from the clippings collection and also the sticker sheet and a few sheets of paper from the My Mind's Eye Indie Chic collection with that lovely yellow. And then I'm also going to throw in a little bit of um, Jenny Bolin brand things. So I have some label stickers to add in and maybe that giant gold butterfly and these new um, embellishments. These are the new flag tags in craft that come out soon. They just debuted at the summer show. So I'm going to get started and see how I can interpret this tennis court dimension very, very loosely into a scrapbooking page. And I'd love for you to scrap along with me. From the dimensions of the tennis court, what I'm taking from this is that there are lots of rectangular pieces, lots of um, horizontal lines rather than verticals. So I'm going to start with this piece of paper as my uh, base for everything from the clippings collections and this is called headliner. But it's not going to be my background sheet. I'm going to use this yellow chevron as the full 12 by 12 and then place this a little bit lower on the page so it looks like this is another layer in all of these different pieces here at the top. So I'm going to start that way and you certainly wouldn't have to use that whole 12 by 12 yellow sheet as the background. You could use something else to keep it more stable or you could just attach the, um, the strip at the top. But what I really really like to do is make sure that my pages are all very sturdy and so I try to always have an intact 12 by 12 sheet in the background. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and use that full sheet, even though I'm covering a lot of it up. But by all means, go ahead and adapt to the process that's best for you. And, and don't feel like you have to waste a whole sheet in the background if that's not the right match for you. I'm just going to be adding brown ink to pretty much everything that I add because that fits the, um, the color scheme of all these papers. So I'm starting to have this horizontal and lots of horizontal bars that I see in the tennis, tennis court sketch. I do want to take some things and have them be not quite so orderly. So my intention is to have the photos be slightly on an angle and so they look like they're layered in with all these bits and pieces. But that means I now need to look at this space here and come up with something that's a bit more square and a bit more horizontal and perhaps divided to mimic the look of the tennis court. So I'm going to look at the papers that I have um, potential here and see what I could cut to fit this space. So here's how I figured I would start that, um, that interior box. So I started with another rectangle in the rectangle, so that's very much like the tennis court sketch, and then another rectangle inside. But in the sketch, everything is quite central. So everything that's coming into the box is very geometric and, and centered in the space that's open. And I just decided at that point that I would go a little bit askew. So I've put this one just ever so slightly off the center and I've added a vertical piece here that's not in the center at all because I just wanted to um, be able to frame the photos knowing that the photos were going to be placed up here. So at this point I can go ahead and add my pictures and just have them kind of overlap with the different layers that are there so that it will bring everything together and really emphasize the choice to have all those layers. And 
And then I wanted to start kind of repeating whatever I could from up here to bring this in. And I think that's a really useful thing when you have a printed um, layer, something like this, where they it looks like you've layered all those pieces, but you know that it's already printed on the paper. What's useful is to be able to duplicate something like that. So I've cut a strip of that black and white um, striped paper because that appears up here. And then I can add that into the design lower on the page to just make it um, a little more obvious that I want all the pieces that I've added myself to match with what's already printed. That also gives me a horizontal line to ground the photos so that they're not kind of floating in the middle of the page. And at this point is where I start to want to add my title, my um, title, my journaling, and my embellishment. So I'll figure out where things can go and then it'll be almost finished from there. My plan is to start the embellishment and things on this side, building that way from the photos. And I've pulled out one of the medium sized craft um, tags and one medium sized label. And I also want to use this big butterfly rub on in gold. I just like the, the mix of the gold and the large butterfly with those large yellow flowers on the pattern paper. But I only want to use half the butterfly. So I'm going to just cut straight through the rub-on while it's still on the sheet and then I can use this piece another time and I'm going to use this one on the layout here and I'm just going to pick up this that part of the photo so that I can get it all in place and then rub that onto the page. Now when I use just half a piece, one thing that's kind of important is to look at where the other part would be visible. So pretty much the rest of the butterfly would be covered here except for this tail here. So I just want to um, make or pay a little attention when I am adding the rest of the embellishment to have something in that spot so it doesn't look really obvious that the rest of the butterfly isn't really there. So I'll just add a, a tag or a label or something there so that it if it were there, it would be covered up. Now, these rub-ons go on really easy with the slight exception of it's hard to tell where all those little dots are. So I just pull up and make sure that I haven't missed too many. And then I've got that design underneath. There we go. And then I can start to add more things on top. With the tag, I want to use my foam squares at the top to give it a bit more dimension at the top of the tag, but just regular plain flat adhesive at the bottom. I can just place this a little lower so that more of the butterfly is visible. And then I have my label sticker to add off the edge of that as well. And with this, I want to make sure that this piece takes me from this all the way to the background paper here so that it crosses all those layers to bring everything together. And then I'm going to start looking at my lettering. I know I want to put the date up here. The title is going to go in this section, and then I'm going to add writing in sort of this area of the page. With the title added, it's a very small title, but it um, works with the label and the um, the size of the letter stickers to the size of the label stickers. So um, I also added a little tab up here and a little ticket here. So I'm framing everything in, bringing everything into that central space, which leaves me this room for my journaling. But this is a little bit too busy to write right on top. So I had a look for different journaling cards that might work. And this is one from the Basic Gray Clippings Collection, um, but meant to be kind of days of the week in a four by six size. And what I'm thinking is that the color and the stitching would match to the, the papers that are already there. And I'll just cut off the days of the week and use just the plain stitched lines for the writing. So if I tuck that underneath, I'll end up with 
some journaling lines that are a bit uh, more user friendly for this space and I want to continue to bring in those horizontal elements like the tennis court diagram so I've also pulled out this one that I'm going to overlap somewhere perhaps here and that um, with my writing here on the card that will pretty much bring everything done. I think I my last little bit is that I'll want to add another tab up here to show that this is another layer of paper and to make these two little tabs a group of three. So one that will fit in this space up here. So I'm almost done at this point. So there's everything all finished and I'm completely aware that it looks very very little like this original tennis court uh, diagram but I hope you can find a few little things that I did take for, um, as my inspiration from the tennis court so I've started with all those horizontal lines lots of things like little boxes put together and then just kind of skewed things a little bit by placing a few items on an angle overlapping a little bit more than um, what would happen on a tennis court because I can use layers and they can't. So I hope um, you will join in this challenge and pop on over to the Jenny Bolin blog to have a look at all the different uh, designs that are interpretations of that same starting uh, sketch. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.